I want to kind of wrap things up by reading to you. Uh, I was at a conference in New Jersey a couple months ago, and there was a, several people from Ukraine there, and we were in a workshop together. And one of them is from Odessa. And if you look at the map, Odessa is down in the black, touching the Black Sea here in south, southern Ukraine. And I asked this person to send me a page or two about the latest in Odessa that I could read tonight. So I want to read it to you all. This person writes, and she, this person asked that I not give their name because, well, you'll probably understand as I read it. Odessa region of Ukraine is extremely important for the Kiev authorities. Several lucrative ports with the flow of goods in transit, a strategically advantageous position in the area of the Danube mouth, the economically active po population, the infrastructure which is not fully destroyed during the years of independence since the breakup of the Soviet Union. This is not a complete list of the region's benefits. Known to everybody, Odessa tolerance and multiculturalism became an obstacle to the total Ukrainization of the region. Odessa resisted the Maidan nationalism so strongly that the so-called patriots have developed and implemented a bloody campaign of intimidation on May 2nd, 2014 at the Odessa Trades Hall massacre where, they, where more than 50 people were killed by neo-Nazis. Having survived the shock the city and the region have moved to active resistance to the new order, expressed in constant actions of resistance, which has reached its climax in the period of May 2nd through 9th of 2015. In these days, tens of thousands of people came out into the streets of the city under the newly prohibited red flags, and Poroshenko showed the world a million of fake smiles on the walk of fame in Odessa under a thunderous cry, fascism will not pass. Under these conditions, Poroshenko recovered the move which is traditional to Ukrainian presidents. He appointed his godfather as the governor of the troublemaking Odessa region. But this time the choice was approved even by the international curators of the Maidan power for it was Mikhail Saakashvili, the former president of Georgia and a favorite US CIA operative who is now wanted for crimes in Georgia, but Ukraine refuses to send him back to his country. He was appointed the governor of Odessa and who is one of the most rabid Russophobes of our days and in the same time doesn't have the reputation of Bandera nationalist who is not directly related to the May 2nd mayhem. By all accounts, the Kiev government has assigned for Saakashvili two tasks, an obvious one and quite one probable, quite probable one. As to the first, everyone agrees that Poroshenko demanded to capture and re redirect the financial flows and above all, the proceeds from the customs and trading port as well as pave the way for the privatization of the region's largest asset, portside plant. As to the probable objective, many analysts mention an escalation of tensions on the border with Transnistria. Transnistria, if, yeah, it's hard to say, trans, yeah. Transnistria. It's along the border of Ukraine and Moldova, and it has a, slew of Russian-speaking people there, and they're now being attacked as well by the whole US CIA operation. With this, Saakashvili should cause the greatest possible damage to Russia, and the rest we'll see. So another front for the war, if you will. Not only then along the Russian border over here, but also along the Moldovan border here. A two-pronged front in this US CIA war.
inside of Ukraine. The new governor immediately developed a rigorous activity, strengthening his already robust reputation of a populist and a windbag. An objective observer analyzing the situation cannot ignore the following facts. Firstly, the active process of the property redistribution is at full speed in Odessa and its region. The press has already published numerous stories about the people in camouflage uniforms who appeared on various enterprises, captured them, and did not let the owners in. Usually these people represent, present themselves as Pravi sector, the right sector, Auto Maidan, another one of the fascist groups, and other Bandera nationalist brands. The great thing is they, is they really are those. Creating and pumping the atmosphere of fear and terror, the nationalists literally beat political opponents with impunity and pay no attention to any laws of the country or to the statements of the liberal leaders of the region. Only recently, the militants brutally beat unarmed protesters who were protesting against holding in prison uh, Artyom Buzilov, a progressive journalist. They repeatedly destroyed the humble and touching makeshift memorial erected by Odessans on the, on the uh, Kulakovo field in memory of those unarmed citizens who were killed at the trades hall on May 2nd. They also constantly terrorized the participants of weekly meetings uh, on the field, many of whom are elderly people. The peak of cynicism of nationalist gangs is the bullying of mothers who lost their children on, on May 2nd at the Odessa Trade Hall. On July uh, 13th of this month, uh, the hearing on the case of Sergi Hadayaka in Odessa court uh, was appointed. This Euromaidan activist is accused of the murder of uh, one, one man, as well as attempted murder of several other people. The relatives of the victims, their friends, and Odessans who wanted to support the mothers and whose sons were apparently killed by this man during the May tragedy last year came to the court hearing. What happened later in the hall cannot be named other than coven and, lawless, coven and lawlessness. Relatives of the victims were insulted, pushed out from the benches. Despite all of the appeals to the judge and to the prosecutor, they were taken photos on mobile phones and cameras and were threatened to be burned next time. No action on the part of the judges and prosecutors to protect the relatives of the victims were taken. After the abolition of the court session, as the judges recused themselves, the patriots have built a corridor of shame through which all of the mothers of the victims and all of those who came to support them had to pass through. At the same time, they were abused, pushed, beaten, kicked in the legs, and spit upon. The police who could stop this abuse were absent in the courtroom. Looking at all these manifestations of painful social schizophrenia that is now not suppressed by the authorities, Odessans cannot believe in the good intentions of the new governor, Saakashvili. Changing the signs does not change anything in substance. That is the main conclusion of Odessa citizens. Moreover, a growing concern has the steps of the new governor that can only be described as a rejection of sovereignty. How else can we assess the fact of the regional administration officials being paid their salaries by the US government? Or the upcoming transfer, the control of the South Odessa Customs Office to an American corporation? There has been at least one article speculating that the US wants to use Odessa to port US Navy warships deployed in the Black Sea. And, and only the nationalists and their henchmen do not get tired to extol the, the steps of the new governor. This causes vague doubts am, among ordinary Odessa citizens. The patriots of what state are those homegrown radical nationalists been taken? I just want to leave you with this. For a long time, I've wondered 
If the U.S. would kill the people in Nicaragua, people in El Salvador, people in Guatemala, people in Honduras, people in Afghanistan, people in Iraq, people in Libya, people in Syria, people in Ukraine who stand against corporate control. And you know, fascism by Mussolini was defined as the wedding of government and corporations. And that's what we have today. So if the US would kill all these people all around the world when they stood up against this fascism, what makes us think that we're so special? That someday they won't come for us too? Thank you all very much for coming tonight. <laughs> No, and I'm a member of the church here. Um, you know, we're a historic church that was in a big building and now uh, just moved downtown into the heart of Bath. And um, since we moved, I've had, a, I've been waiting for the opportunity when we would sit and have a political conversation in this building. And I think this is the baptism, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first political conversation we've had. And so I just want to express my own um, admiration for this group and for our guests from Massachusetts, our persistent friends that found us um, in spite of no sign out there. Um, I, wanna, I just want to offer my deep appreciation because I know how painful it is to, to bear witness to the story that's being told and the truth about the country that we live in and the world that we live in. And I feel like it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, and that's what I've always gotten from this community, is that courage. Um, and I also know that we go home alone and we grieve deeply for the consequences, the human consequences of what we've heard tonight. Um, and in my experience, that grief is our collective prayer and I'm grateful for everyone in this room for that offering to the world that we live in, and I think that's what matters. <laughs>